Chemistry 30. This is our second lesson in the Organic Chemistry Unit. This is Alkenes and Alkynes. Before we start the lesson, there is a pre-question. Name the following organic molecule. Pause the video and attempt this example. First, we have to find the longest carbon chain in the molecule, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. We want to number this carbon chain from the end that gives all branches the lowest value. We would number it from this point as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We then have two different methyl branches. Methyl because they each have one carbon in them. We have also two ethyl branches here and here. Ethyl because there are two carbons in those branches. And we also have a propyl branch, which contains three carbons. Remember, when naming, branches get listed in alphabetical order. Our name is 4,5-diethyl-2,3-dimethyl-4,5-dimethyl-4,5-dimethyl-4,5-dimethyl-4,5-dimethyl-4,5-dimethyl-4,5-dimethyl-4,5-dimethyl-4,5-dimethyl-4
In this example, it would either be ENE or YNE. Consider the following. Multiple bonds require a location number when naming. If there is only one multiple bond on the first carbon in the parent chain, it does not require a number location. It would be already assumed that that multiple bond is coming off the first carbon. When you have more than one multiple bond, add prefixes to the ending. For example, diene or triene. Diene refers to two multiple bonds. Triene refers to three multiple bonds. An example would be hex dash one comma three dash diene, meaning we have a six carbon molecule with a double bond coming off the first carbon and the third carbon in the chain. Example number one, name the following compounds. Pause the video and attempt this example. In our first molecule, we have to find the longest carbon chain that includes the multiple bond. So we'll start here as one, two, three, four, five, and six. We then want to number the chain from the end that gives the multiple bond the lowest value. Therefore, the multiple bond will be coming off one, two, the second carbon. That leaves us with one branch, which is a methyl branch. It will be coming off one, two, three, four, five, the fifth carbon. As a result, our name is 5-methyl hex-2-ene, meaning we have a six carbon chain with a double bond at the second carbon in the chain and one methyl branch coming off the fifth carbon in the chain. In our next example, we want to find the longest carbon chain that includes the multiple bond. One, two, three, four, five. And number that chain from the end that gives the multiple bond the lowest value. Therefore, this will be our first carbon, our second, our third, our fourth, and our fifth. We have a methyl branch coming off the fourth carbon in the chain. Our name is 4 methyl pent 1 ine. Pent 1 ine represents that we have a five carbon chain with a triple bond coming off the first carbon in the chain. And we have a single carbon branch, a methyl branch, coming off the fourth carbon in the chain. In our last example, we need to find the longest carbon chain that includes both multiple bonds, which would be one, two, three, four, five. And number that chain from the end that gives both double bonds the lowest value. We would number this from left to right. One, two, three, four, five. Our double bonds are coming off the first and third carbon in the chain. As a result, our name is pent-1,3-diene. dash dash Don't forget the di representing there's two multiple bonds. Drawing alkenes and alkynes. Again, follow the same rules when drawing. Start from the back of the name, which would be the longest carbon chain. It doesn't matter what end you start numbering from, because you could be drawing that molecule from a different perspective. And remember, start by drawing your carbons, then add your hydrogens at the end. Example number two. Draw the line diagram of 4-methyl pent-2-ene and draw the condensed structural diagram of 3,3-dimethyl but-1-ine. Pause the video and attempt this example. Here is our line diagram. Starting from the back of the name, pent-2-ene. That represents we have a five carbon chain, one, two, three, four, five. And that double bond is coming off the second carbon in the chain. 
Then we have a methyl branch, a single carbon branch coming off the fourth carbon in the chain. One, two, three, four. And we've drawn our methyl branch. For our condensed structural diagram, we have the following. Again, starting at the back of the name, we have but one ein meaning we have a four carbon chain, one, two, three, four. And our triple bond is coming off the first carbon in the chain. We then have dimethyl, two single carbon branches, both coming off the third carbon in the chain. One, two, three. Here's our one methyl branch, and here is the other methyl branch. Remember, a condensed structural diagram only shows the carbon-carbon bonds. Cycloalkenes and cycloalkynes are cyclic structures containing either double or triple bonds. Both examples below represent cycloalkenes. The rules for naming and drawing cycloalkenes and cycloalkynes are the exact same as they are for cycloalkanes. You must determine the location and type of multiple bond present, and always remember the multiple bond takes priority over branches. The two structures below have the following names. First, we have cyclobutene. That's because we have a four carbon ring with one double bond, and that double bond will be coming off the first carbon, therefore we do not need a number location. In our second molecule, we have cyclohex-1,3-diene. Dash dash cyclohex representing we have a six carbon ring with two double bonds, one coming off the first carbon and the other coming off the third. In this example, we would consider this the first carbon, this the second, or this the third. Or we could also consider this the first, this the second, and this the third. Both would still give us the same answer. Example number three. Draw the line structural diagram of 3-ethyl cyclopent-1-ene. Pause the video and attempt this example. Remember when drawing, start with the back of the name. Pent-1-ene. That means we have a five carbon ring, one, two, three, four, five, with one double bond. The double bond takes priority, so we'll always be given the first carbon. Therefore, this will be our second carbon, and this will be our third. And we have an ethyl branch coming off the third carbon. The ethyl has one, two carbons. Moving forward, we will explore aromatic hydrocarbons.